Christ. It is Nanaoku once again with Plain Truth Ministries. I believe strongly that just as Jesus Christ before his death on the cross prayed in the book of John chapter 17, he asked God to sanctify his disciples. He had worked with them for three and a half years and he was near the time where he should die. And it was a time where their faith would be tested. And so in his petition to God, he said, sanctify them through thy truth. And he explained what he meant by the truth by saying that his word is truth. And so therefore, it is my belief that whatever the Bible says should be interpreted within the Bible without the use of our personal experiences, which most at times contradicts what the Bible says. And so I come with you with another truth for today. And I have titled it, Hold the Winds. Hold the winds. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, you are worthy to be praised. There is none like you. We have come to your throne of grace this day and we ask that you bless us with your words. For we believe that by thy word, we will be sanctified. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Every man without history is bound to repeat the mistakes of their fathers. And so therefore, we are to look into history. Let's read my key text for today in the book of Revelation chapter 7. Verse 1 says, And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So you see where I had my topic from, from verse 1. He says that the angels were holding the four winds that the wind would not blow on the earth. And then in verse 3 he says that an angel came and told them not to hurt. In other words, keep holding on. And that is what we are looking at. In the year 1983, right after the Second World War, President Ronald Reagan decided that, look, in order to prevent people from attacking the U.S., we have to follow the path of the fathers. That is, prepare ourselves for any danger that any other country might pose on the United States of America. And so, the proliferation of the nuclear weapons began. America was not alone. The Russians also learned from their past mistakes and so they also started doing the same what about iran same almost all the countries with their nuclear weapons now did the same thing but this prolification of nuclear weapons is what is causing the earth to be on its toes and so in 1983 on the september 26th a scare happened. That same scare is what happened in our day. Today being November the 16th. We slept yesterday with the assumption that there was going to be what we call World War. And this was going to be the third one. But this is not the only time we've heard of this. We had a similar one in 2019. 2020 we had a similar one. 2021 we also had the same thing. It looks as though World War III is imminent. Let's go back to our story. The Russians prepared themselves for any kind of nuclear strike by the U.S. And so they said that if the U.S. is prepared to strike them, they are also prepared to strike. And if they strike first, that is if the Russians strike first, they can decimate the United States of America within 30 minutes. And the U.S. also said the same thing. That Russia will be will be annexed to the ground if they are to attack first. The United States of America built for itself machines that could detect nuclear warheads from way far ahead before it gets to the country. What about the Russians? They did the same. One man by the name of Petrov designed OKO, that is OKO, and then what was that for? He wrote codes that would determine if the Americans strike first. He was always there. He was stationed in there. One day at the base, what had happened? September 25th, his machines were just beeping so loud. 
He checked and the machine said the United States of America had fired the first missile. Anybody in the shoes of Petrov will accept that the machine was right. Why? Because before that time, Russia had shot down a Korean airline that was carrying 263 passengers. Inside of this plane was a U.S. senator who was still serving and they were all killed completely. Russia defended itself by saying the Korean airline invaded its space. And so they were on their toes, expecting an attack, expecting that the U.S. would reply them. Petrov looked, he kept looking, and the machine kept beeping and said, there are four other nuclear warheads on their way. The rule of engagement was simple. Petrov, the moment you see this stuff, just give a phone call and let the Russians that this is happening and they will also reply or they will give a counterattack. What did Petrov do? He waited. Now, back in America, back in America, the computers around started beeping that Russia had fired nuclear weapons. What was going to happen? Ronald Reagan waited and said nothing and nobody should strike. Petrov, also in Oko, decided not to strike. These leaders helped to keep the world as we know it to be. Let me say this, in an event of a war involving nuclear weapons, the atmosphere we know it to be now would be changed. The water bodies we know would be changed. The earth as we know it would be changed. And as much as about two thirds of the population of this world would be wiped out. Why didn't Ronald Reagan decide to act at once that he was going to protect American citizens? What about Petro? Why didn't he respond to that message that said Russia was under attack? And I dare say that the winds of this earth was held by these four angels. In the event of a nuclear attack, this world will be taken away. This world will be broken into pieces. But remember, the world belongs to our Lord Jesus Christ and He, only He, has the prerogative to clear the earth of sin, to clear the earth of filth. So on September 26th, people in America decided to hold vigils. Those who had once belonged to churches but had fallen out because of the sins in the world decided to go back to seek the face of God. When the threat of nuclear weapons became so glaring in the faces of the masses, atheists began to pray. When it looked as though Russia was actually going to strike and kill U.S. citizens, they went back to the temples of God. Christians who had taken the name Christian but were not living according to it sank down on their knees and started praying. That was a time where people turned their hearts and minds to God in the face of danger. What happened? They understood from the side of the U.S. that there was a glitch in their computer. In Russia, Petrov said, he had just written the codes and he knew that there was probably a line that he had missed. Probably there was a bug in the code he had written. That is why he had to wait and see. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, gave us certain admonitions. And I would want to read from verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the builders of the temple. And the topic for this chapter is signs of the end of this age. Now let's continue. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? 
that end of the world we are dreading is what we're asking about. Now listen to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. What is deception? Deception is when someone is caused or someone is lured to trust in one, is lured to trust in another person through words, through deeds, through actions. In other words, when the truth is replaced with something that looks like the truth. Remember, nobody can deceive you with a complete lie. They would have to take the lie and then make it look like the truth. That is deception. So when Jesus said in John 17, 17, that sanctify them by the truth, that word is truth, he understood what he was saying. You go to verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Since time memorial, we've heard of wars and rumors of wars. Now listen to Jesus. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. What am I trying to say? All these things will happen, but the end is not here. We slept off recently. Last year, when Russia attacked Ukraine, we saw videos. A U.S. Army top-notch made a statement. If you dare attack the U.S., we will strike back, and I promise you something. Somebody will raise your kids. And the next video we saw were videos of ammunition. We saw their aircraft carriers. We saw the Navy moving. We saw the Air Force. We saw the tanks moving. We've seen war. We don't want war. But if you want war with the United States of America, there's one thing I can promise you, so help me God. Someone else will raise your sons and daughters. Russia's president Putin also said, if you dare step a foot in Ukraine, I would release my missiles. Я хочу еще раз все-таки подчеркнуть это. Я говорил, но мне очень бы хотелось, чтобы вы меня услышали все-таки в конце концов. И донесли это до своих читателей, зрителей и пользователей в интернете. Но вы понимаете или нет, что если Украина будет в НАТО и военным путем будет возвращать себе Крым, европейские страны автоматически будут втянуты в военный конфликт с Россией. Конечно, значит, потенциал объединенный организации НАТО и России не сопоставим. Мы понимаем. Но мы также и понимаем, что Россия одна из ведущих ядерных держав. Но по некоторым компонентам, по современности даже многих опережает. Победителей не будет. I understand that truly they have certain missiles that can decimate a half of the US. I understand that US also have missiles that can decimate Russia. All these are rumors of wars, but the end is not here. In the end day, what is going to happen, the whole world is going to be destroyed. So if Jesus says we will hear of wars and rumors of wars, it means that yes, the wars would happen. But the war would not be one that would destroy the world. No. So last year, the moment the strike of Russia was in Ukraine, we began tweeting World War Three, World War Three. I saw people tweeting World War Three. We were so excited. Forgetting that in the event of a nuclear war, nobody would remain the same. If you survive like what happened to those in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, you would live with the complications. We didn't understand that. We didn't. We didn't. Even yesterday, on Twitter, it was trending. When I say yesterday, I mean November the 15th, 2022. It was trending on Twitter so much that yes, World War III is here. We're making memes out of them. People were jubilating. People were happy without realizing the negative effect it was going to have on us. As a Christian, what did I do? I slept off with my mind running. I was just thinking, what is going to happen? What is going to happen? What is going to happen? Is, is, is it true? Am I just going to come up? I want a documentary, the pilot who, who dropped that bomb in Hiroshima. They said it looked as though the sun had dropped down to the earth. I made sure my windows were closed tightly because 
in the event of a nuclear weapon, a nuclear war, when the bomb is dropped here, I don't want to wake up at 12 a.m. and feel as though it is 12 p.m. God being so good. I read this Bible text, Revelation 7, and I understood what was happening. I understood what was going to happen. Let me read it once more, one more time to your hearing. It says that, and after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on the tree. When we talk about four in prophecy, when I say prophecy, anything concerning the end time, anything concerning the people of God, we call that prophecy. So the book of Revelation is prophecy. Jeremiah has some prophetic sayings in there. Isaiah has saved. Even the book of Matthew has saved. Now, to understand what four means, we go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 31. And Matthew 24, 31 says that, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. To tell you that the four in here represents universality. Revelation 7, one more time, verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. To tell you that, at the end time, the war that will happen is going to be universal. It is not going to be between just two people, not between three countries, not between four nations, not between five nations, but everybody's involved. I was thinking, what is going to happen? What is going to happen? With all these World War Three tweets, what is going to happen? Surprisingly, a top U.S. official said Russia had dropped a bomb in Poland and had killed people. And the rules of engagement is that if you attack any NATO country, the Article 5 of NATO would be in full force. And what does that mean? Russia will be attacked by every member of NATO. And you think when all these people are going to attack Russia, Russia is going to stand alone? Take a look at China. Take a look at Iran. Who said they've developed an, a, a, a hypersonic, a hypersonic bomb? Just look at them. You think they will stand alone? No, they will not. No, they will not. No, they will not. So these angels are holding on, but they were ready to hurt the earth. Now listen to what happened. And I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. So the angel was flying with a top speed, so swift, because these four angels were ready to release the wind and he had to, he had to fly swiftly. He shouted with a loud voice, do not do it. Do not leave the winds. Read verse 3. He says, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servant of our God in their foreheads. So he had to fly swiftly. And then he came with a message. Who gave him that message? Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 24? That the end is not yet. Now let's read something in Revelation. The whole book of Revelation, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants, things which must shortly come to pass. And he said and signified it by his angels, an angel unto his servant John. So Jesus is the one giving the angel charge to give answers to John. So in other words, Jesus sent the angel. Another way to explain this is that the meaning of angel can be found in the word angel in Greek, and that is angelos. And the meaning of angelos is what messenger. You, a messenger has no right to give it. his own message. A messenger cannot give his own message, but gives off what he has heard from his ruler or master. And so Jesus Christ, I believe, sent that angel to tell the four angels not to allow the troubles to happen. He came down swiftly. So I asked myself, if the angel has told these angels not to allow strife to happen in the whole world, what is going to happen now that Russia, it seems, has attacked Poland? Lo and behold, in the morning, Pentagon just came out and said, 
that bomb was not from Russia, but from Ukraine. Hallelujah. You think it was Pentagon who spoke? You think it was Pentagon who spoke? You think in the day of Ronald Reagan, September 26th, you think it was Ronald Reagan and the officials who said the computers glitched? You think it was a glitch of the computers? You think Petrov just came out of his own to say it was a mistake in his, in his quotes? No. What I say is that it was the angel of God who went in to do that. It was the angel of God who spoke to their mind and their hearts that, no, nothing should be done. No, do not strike back. And so, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. But the question is, why is that so? Why is that so? If nothing happened because of these angels, why is that so? Continue Revelation 7, verse 3 says, Had not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servant of our God in their foreheads. The use of the foreheads here is to signify acceptance of who God is in the mind, settled in the truth, so that you cannot be moved. You are to be part, those who have been sealed are part of the elect of whom Jesus said that the devil would deceive so much so that if possible, he would deceive the very elect. Those elect are those we are talking about, settled in the truth. It is for these people that the wings of strife has not been left loose. And Jesus has told them, hold the wings. I am asking you a question. Have you settled the truth? Have you been sealed? It's a question I'm asking you. You tell yourself you're a Christian. You tell yourself you go to church. You tell yourself you have been sealed by God. You tell yourself you are settled in the truth. And yet, let seriousness of the world is what you engage in. You tell yourself you have settled in the truth, and yet pornography is something you love to watch. You tell yourself that you have settled in the truth about God, and yet when sin is becoming rampant, you jeer on. When sin is becoming rampant, you become happy. When people are fighting, you encourage them to do so. When social injustice is happening, you keep quiet. When things of the Bible is being mocked, you keep quiet. Have you settled in the truth? Simple question, have you? Have you been sealed by God? Listen, this will not keep happening every day. For just one day, the angels would have to leave the wind for it to blow. Right now, they are holding the wind. Right now, they have been given a command to hold on. Right now, they have been given a command for there are some people, like Jesus said, there are some outside of the fold who need to come into the fold. And these are the people, these are the reason why Jesus Christ has given that instruction for the wind not to be left. I'm asking you one more time. Have you settled in the truth? Oh, you settled in the truth and yet you see a human being as superior to God. You take the words of man over the words of the Bible. Oh, you have settled in the truth and yet you neglect the Bible as the word of God. You have settled in the truth and yet when it comes to things of the spirit, you put your hand behind your back, sit your bottom somewhere and decide to let it go. You have settled in the truth. Settled in the truth. You have settled in the truth and yet you have no grace for fellow man who is as a sinner as you are. You think you have settled in the truth. And yet, when someone falls, instead of you to go down on your knees, help that person up through prayers, you stand and then broadcast the fall of that man simply because he didn't fall in the way you have fallen. God have mercy on us. There is going to be a time where the angels would not have any more reason to hold on because at that time the command will come. He that is holy, let him be holy still. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. On that day, where will you be? Where will you be? You live double life, double standards. One in church, one at home. I dare say three standards. One at home, one in church, one in school. One at home, one in church, one outside of home and church. Is that what you're doing? Then I tell you, you have not settled in the truth. Like I said, I'm only going to say plain truth on this channel. 
You can be a church elder and yet you have not settled in the truth. You can be an evangelist like myself and have not settled in the truth. You can be a pastor and have not settled in the truth. Oh, you can be a church member and have not settled in the truth. Beware. For the angels are holding on right now and they are expecting that you will allow yourself to be sealed in the forehead. If that happens, then when they lose the wings, you will be saved from all the troubles. So, Beware, be careful. So, do not despair. When you see World War III moving around, what you should say is that these are rumors of wars. Our God is coming. And when he is coming, he needs not anybody to type on Twitter, I have seen Jesus, or Jesus is here. For every eye will see him, even those who hate him, they will all see him. May the Lord God be with you, as we have understood that the angels are holding on. And so we have to allow ourselves to be settled in the truth. May the Lord God be with you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, the word has come to us. We ask that you, God, will allow us to settle in the truth. We ask that you, God, will grant us the spirit. For you have said when the spirit comes, he will teach us. You have said when the spirit comes, he will guide us into all truth. And we understand that sanctification comes through the truth of thy word. May your name be praised now and forevermore. Amen.